Hey everybody, welcome to Northern Thailand. Listen, have you ever wanted to start composting but you got afraid of doing it because you thought to yourself, gee, I gotta figure out all this stuff, carbon to nitrogen ratios, I need these tools, I need this tumbler, I need these pallets. What if I told you that I could show you how to do what's called a fungally dominated compost pile that you never have to flip, and that the only thing you really need is a tarp? Time, patience, and a little bit of water. Think you could do that? I know you can do that. And if I can do it, you can do it. So come on, let's go take a look at it together. Now, you don't need 100 foot tall teakwood trees with leaves the size of your head to do this type of a pile. I'm not gonna lie, it's nice to have them if you do, but uh, you don't need these materials to necessarily do a fungal compost pile. Uh, if you just look around your yard, you're gonna find all kinds of leaves and twigs and sticks and branches and things that you can use to put this together with. And that's really all I did here. Uh, this was back in February this year in 2021. And I luckily had everything from just useless old bushes and shrubs to the largest size teak tree leaves that you saw earlier to go ahead and start making this pile with. And it really was necessary because every place I live, I always have compost going. Uh, my garden is my home. It's the most important part of my home. And so compost is something that just has to happen. In this particular scenario, I've done this pile before at an old place that I used to live at here in Thailand. And when I did, the end result was this beautiful, rich, dark brown stuff that was just fungally. I mean, it had mycelium running through it. It was great. And all I did was apply it to some of the fruit trees on my old property. It was right before I moved to this new one. And within a month of adding that compost to it, I mean, take a look at this red mulberry tree. This thing grew a foot in one month, real talk. So if you have shrubs or bushes like this, these are perfect, this is all you really need. You just need something to go ahead and chop up and get started with, and these are absolutely perfect to do this with. Now, here's the advantages of cold composting. And I mean, just depending on what you wanna use, the thing to know is that you're not gonna to have to flip this pile. It is a no flip pile. I mean, this is the ultimate lazy man's compost. It really, really is but there's some other distinct advantages about it as well. And in the way of thinking about it, this is not a carbon to nitrogen ratio type of pile. This is about F to B, which is fungus to bacteria. And the king of these processes is one that's called the johnson Sioux bioreactor. I'm gonna leave some links in the description below that I really encourage every single one of you to look at. It's gonna give you information that you're gonna find quite valuable in this process. But anyway, we're just going ahead and we're chopping things up. And once everything all chopped up and ready to go, all you have to do is just add it to your pile. That's it, just go ahead and add to your pile and then go ahead and water it down once you get everything added in place. And just make sure you drench it really good. You wanna make sure it's pretty good and saturated. Once that's done, just go ahead and cover it with your tarp. Now the tarp is necessary because it's gonna keep in the heat and the moisture and help things speed up the decomposition of all the, the different materials that you've added in. Now, one thing I wanna make sure that I emphasize to you that you don't add are food scraps. I made a big mistake here. I didn't do this on my original pile at my old place. I don't know why I did it this time, but I threw a small amount of rice and broccoli on top. And it's not that it won't decompose. I mean, I added more greens to it as well, in addition to some water. And guess what happened after this? Yeah, the four-legged mongrel from the village decided to pay my compost pile a little visit and give it some custom air holes. Aren't they nice? But you know what? When you're this cute and you're this lovable, eh, you have a tendency to get away with a little more mischief than usual. But you know, this may turn out to be a blessing in disguise. I mean, these holes will allow for more air to get in, for the pile to off gas, and for moisture to get in. It's really more my fault than hers, and it's cool. I think this will work, but what happened next definitely wasn't cool. Yeah, that's the main branch off my jackfruit tree. It's about two o'clock in the morning, and I'm gonna tell you something, that sound effect does not do justice to the sound this thing made when it came crashing down. I mean, it's about the size of a normal tree, and I couldn't really see what happened, so I had to wait until the next day, and as soon as I took a closer look at it, it was pretty obvious that the poor thing is really diseased. I mean, it's obvious that someone tried to lop the top off about 10 feet up, and even still, this thing grew really big branches and started to produce fruit. This is deserving of some TLC, and I definitely have some natural farming recipes that I could use in the way of maintenance solutions and other things from Jadam that will help this tree out. But right now, 
I have something else I need to address, and that is this branch, because this thing is huge, and actually, I'm kind of excited. This is another situation where the problem is the solution. And it's a really good problem to have because now I have a lot of woody materials to add to this pile. Now, if you haven't seen a jackfruit tree before, these branches, the, the smaller branches are really soft wood. They're green wood, they have a, a really milky white sap that's extremely sticky, but it's, it's pretty exciting for me because I know that what this is loaded full of is nutrients that the, you know, the microbes are just gonna absolutely chow down on and produce some really good compost out of. So I got a, a long handled pair of pliers, or a clippers I should say, and just started to go to town on the branch. It, it really wasn't that difficult. It took me about maybe 30 to 45 minutes to get everything done. Um, but you know, this is really, this is exactly what this pile needs is something like this. And it's gonna rival the size of the pile that I had at my old place. This is gonna wind up being somewhere between three and four feet tall when I'm done with it. But as you can see right now, I'm just, you know, chopping everything up and I mean I've even got you know as you can see just unripened fruit that is going into this pile as well all this is going to contribute to what it is I'm looking to do and that is to establish a really strong fungal community and again because we're not flipping this pile the reason that's able to happen is because the hyphae from the fungus are able to get established this way all you have to do is just manage the air the water and just add to it when you have and it, it just, it takes care of itself. Just let it ride. It's a really, really straightforward process. But um, yeah, it, it took me, like I said, about 30 to 45 minutes to get this thing completely chopped down. And the main branch, I'm just gonna have to wait until a later point in time when I have a saw that I can actually saw this thing up. And when I do, I'll have some nice wood that I can go ahead and make things like charcoal and wood ash with. That way I'm not working with mystery wood. I'll be able to know that the resources I'm using are pretty clean. Well, at least coming from my property. But I'm pretty excited about this, so we're going to see what's going to happen next. I'm just going to get this thing covered up, and uh, we'll see. Oh, this should be a fun day today. Bye-bye, <laughs> jackfruit tree. And that's what you get for posting on Facebook. <laughs> My landlord saw this and, and she just thought she was doing me a favor. She was, uh, she didn't understand that I had said I was going to take care of the tree myself. So she sent a couple guys over and they took the tree down. And as you can see, they're just pulling it away now. They <laughs> gone forever. I don't have enough time to put together another pile. And it's really the least of my concerns at this moment. Um, what I did have them do though, since they had a chainsaw, is I just had them cut up a bunch of the wood because I have applications for charcoal and wood ash um, at various times that I'll go ahead and I'll use. So this will be a good chance for me to just get these things cut up really nice and small and store them aside for later on. Um, but the, the thing that's really sad about this is this tree was somewhere around 25 to 30 years old. It had been around a long time. But uh, you know, just all I'm doing right now is just getting all this wood put together so I can set it aside to go ahead and allow it to age and use it later. And uh, the next thing that I've got to take a look at is this. So I, I know this looks like a waste of fruit, but unfortunately these jackfruit were not ripe yet. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just get the compost pile filled up with them. The saddest part for me with this is that this jackfruit tree was putting out somewhere conservatively around two to 300 pounds of food every year and now it's gone, but it's okay. We're going to go ahead and clean it up now. If you've ever had juicy fruit gum, you know what jackfruit tastes like. I swear that's where the flavor comes from. I don't know if Wrigley's did that on purpose or not, but the, um, as you can see, this tree is just absolutely bleeding sap and it did for about a week, but the, the scent in the air just had this beautiful juicy fruit flavor for about a good week after the tree had been cut down. But it, this whole thing just broke my heart, but you know what they say, the show must go on and there's just no time to worry about it. It's time to deconstruct and reconstruct this pile. Stuff 
So, I mean, as you can see, stuff here decomposes very quickly. That's some beautiful stuff that was just at the bottom of the pile. I'm gonna take it and put it on some of the trees right now as I start breaking the rest of this down. Now, there's probably a couple hundred pounds worth of jackfruit in there. So I'm just going to break down a lot of this wooded stuff that was originally in the top, along with some of this fluff that's off to the left here, break up some additional leaves, just try to make a nice pile out of it. I'm gonna wet it down, I'm gonna cover it up, and I am not gonna touch it again for at least a month, if not longer. I'm just gonna let it go. Looking back on everything now, I actually do consider it very lucky that, you know, the tree and the, uh, you know, the fact that it got cut down happened when it did. The La Nina system that happened during the 2021 calendar year ended in May, but someone forgot to tell Thailand this. Uh, this is a weather system that's coming in just at the beginning of May and it is going to hit us and it's going to hit us hard. But as you can see, the pile here in the month of May, it dropped considerably. And that's exactly what I expected it to do. So taking off the tarp and giving it a little haircut and uh, watering it down, it's a, it's a good thing to do. Yeah, I would recommend definitely with this type of pile to do this about once a month. You just want to make sure that you've got consistent moisture throughout the pile. Um, and like I said, just giving it a little trim like this, it helps break things down. You know, the greater surface area that you can make with any of these materials, the, the faster they're going to compost and also the better they're going to be. But 
Again, you just, you don't flip it. The main thing is you just don't flip these piles. Really, really important that you don't do that. So as you can see, I'm just watering this down and check that out. I don't know if you can see those or not, but the jackfruit are really, really black right now. That's the decomposition process. And here we are in June. I, uh, I had my gardener come over with his string trimmer and he uh, took care of my yard for me a little bit. And so I took some of the grass clippings and uh, put them on top of the pile. In addition to some palm fronds that had fallen off the various bamboo palms on my property. Again, just give it a nice little haircut. And again, this is just, the whole reason for this is because as the pile continues to shrink, more and more of those branches that were initially put in the pile back in, in April are starting to protrude, as well as these palm fronds. So I try to cut them up as much as I can at first, but sometimes I don't, I just throw them on top and just let them go. There's no problem in either approach. It just uh, really depends on what you wanna do and how much time you wanna put into it. This is gonna be a really good and healthy pile, I can already tell. So I don't mind taking the extra time to do this the way that I am. And uh, you know, it's gonna pay off in the end. The dividends here with fungal compost are definitely a plus. Look how black those jackfruit get. Seriously, look at that thing. All the composters come out when you leave the tarp off, which I had done since around mid-June. And this again was just to get some more water and more air directly into the pile because this is kind of into the home stretch. Uh, here in July, there was just a few last things to go ahead and throw on top, but really there's nothing else that needs to be added to this pile. It's, it's done. By done, I mean there's nothing else that I really need to add. I mean, this thing is really composted down quite a bit. The only reason I haven't started taking it apart yet is because I have a very specific purpose in mind for this compost of what I'm going to be using it for. Um, that and also because the rain has been pretty consistent. Um, I just haven't had an opportunity yet as we go into August to harvest the compost out of the bottom of this pile. But I did put the tarp back on right at about mid-July and uh, because I knew it was going to start raining again. It's uh, it's just been raining like crazy. This rainy season has been just unrelenting. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure I got the tarp back on before we got hit. And once the rain started to hit us again, I thought to myself, you know, maybe I can get away with just one more run of taking the tarp off. And then once I hit about mid-August, I'll go ahead and I'll put it back on. And so that's what I did. Um, here we are in August. And uh, just getting ready to put the tarp back on after a good month of getting wet. And this really isn't the home stretch now. I am gonna harvest this very shortly. Now, the reveal isn't in this video, but it's coming up soon, guys. And like I said, I have a very specific purpose in mind for what I'm gonna be using this compost for. It's, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And it's actually, it's in line with the theme of this channel, as I said a few videos ago. And while I don't want to fully reveal what's coming up next for this compost, I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. I'll give you a sneak peek. Bioremediation, stage one. A lot coming up, guys. Stay tuned. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you haven't already, please do like, share, and subscribe. And hit that bell notification icon for when I upload new content. And speaking of that, I really do want to apologize to you for not having something up recently. Um, as you can see, I'm dealing with the rainy season, and so I've got to make progress when the sun is out. I do have some fun content that's coming up soon, but it's a series that I'm putting together. Those take just a little bit longer to get done. So please hang in there with me, wherever you are in the world today or tonight. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs> what are you two doing? You'll quit jumping. Why?